Hello, health coaches. We are back with another Coach the Coach session. This is where I bring on a real life health coach from our Health Coach Power community. And we talk about their one big burning question. So I know you're going to want to tune into today's episode because Isabella is a little bit ahead of where you might be in your business, or at least where many of the coaches in our community are in their businesses. Isabella is a little bit ahead of you. And that's always super interesting to look at and see, huh? How'd she do that? And in fact, today, Isabella is looking forward herself. She's looking forward to the next stage. And we'll talk about what that's going to look like for her. But in any case, Isabella, thanks for being here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's especially exciting to bring you on as one of our international members. We do have members in our community from around the world. Tell everyone a bit about where you're from and where you are. So I'm Italian. I was born in Italy, but I've been living in London in the UK for about 15 years now. And I'm married to an Australian, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's right. And you're traveling soon, aren't you? Yeah, that's you're right. all over the place. And how long have you been a health coach? I graduated from IIN in 2017. Um, so, you know, initially it was I actually studied for personal interest, not so much to become a health coach. Yeah. And then I sort of got passionate about it. And the first two or three years were more, you know, trying and, and uh, you know, getting stuck in and trying to see how I could make it work. My, my kids, I have three boys, were still quite young, all in school. And so the time I could dedicate to health coaching was quite limited. But as they're growing up and just one is in school at the moment, the others are all doing other things. Um, I have more time and I want to make it a successful business. So that's my, that's my aim. So in 2017, you started out a little fumbling along in the beginning as everybody kind of yeah. goes through. And then you ended up doing fast track with us last, last year. year. Yeah. Last yeah. year. And now you're in our weekly mentorship group as yeah. well. Can you tell everyone a little bit about how Fast Track worked for you for the stage of business you were at when you joined? Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. I, I you know, when you are in this, um, well, I suppose when you're passionate about anything and you're looking for help on online, you find a lot of courses and coaches. And I had been looking for a while and, uh, but I had been following you for quite a long time. And uh, when I, looked into HPU and fast track, I thought that's exactly what I needed because I had been sort of throwing a few things up in the air to see if they stuck. And uh, uh, having been away from a business life for a long time, um, I really felt like a fish out of water. And I, especially as, as you say, you know, you specialize in health, co health coaching. It's not general business coaching. Um, found it extremely helpful and I started doing things that I never thought I would do like you know organize a free challenge and I got my mailing list set up I got clients so you know it was definitely a, a, a big step in the right direction it changed everything so good so we got you up that first big step and now I love hearing that you are looking to get up the next step I have a feeling we're going to come back to exactly what you just said about why you joined <laughs> HPU and we talk about how you're gonna get clients to right. take the next step with you. So That's let me right. read your big burning question. Oh, before I do that, if we have anybody watching or listening who's interested in doing Fast Track this year, unfortunately you didn't get to go through with Isabella last year, but we're doing it one time this year and you can join us. The waitlist is now open at healthcoachpower.com slash waitlist. That's the first step for you. Okay, Isabella, your big burning question was, because I loved it. She wrote, how do I build a really profitable six, seven figure business all by myself while staying true to my nature, purpose and talents and without having a breakdown? I really <laughs> want to be financially independent and show my boys and husband what I'm capable of in this second act of my life. Love it so much. <laughs> Isabella, tell us a little bit about why it's so important to you to do this. Uh, you said you told me before we start, we hit record that you're 52. Why is it so important to you right now? Well, I, you know, before I, uh, I've always, I'm very curious. I've always had a lot of interest. I studied economics at university and I had big dreams. You know, I wanted to have a big career. Not I didn't necessarily know in what, um, but I ended up 
by chance meeting my husband that I was only 22 and um, I finished university, but then we got married, moved, uh, um, well, he, he was already abroad, he was Australian. We came to London and I went and uh, worked in the city in an investment bank. Um, and I, as I said, I had big dreams, but <laughs> I realized that studying economics and actually applying it on uh, every day was rather boring and really <laughs> not, <laughs> not at all what I wanted to do. And I ended up having a semi breakdown, uh, you know, suffered panic attacks, had all sorts of uh, health issues related to stress. And I knew, I knew it was that, you know, I, I knew that my life and my ideal job was not going to be in a bank. But at the time, that, that's what I, you know, that's what I did. Uh, then I had kids one after the other, had three boys, moved to Italy for a while, came back to London, looked after them. My husband had a, uh, you know, big career. Um, so he's always been the main uh, breadwinner. Uh, but in 2012, and he was still quite young, he had a stroke out of the blue um, while he was in Australia um, and almost died. I had a major stroke. Luckily, he survived with no damage, really. He only lost his sight partially. Um, but that made me think about me and the future and the fact that, you know, um, even though our marriage is uh, all well and happy, you never know what might happen. And I just want to, um, you know, go after my dreams and do what I uh, thought I would do before having kids. I've always been a very happy mom and uh, my boys are now growing. So I want to show them that I, you know, I'm not just their mother and I can do other things. And, yes. <laughs> and you know, yeah, I want, I want to have my own independence, whatever, you know, just to contribute to our family and, and whatever, but also to just in case, you never know. Thank you for sharing your story. I mean, health coaches come in all shapes and sizes, but <laughs> I'm sure many of our listeners can relate to, if not worrying about the future, at least thinking like, I want to do this for myself. I want to mm -hmm. make this impact in the world. I want to show my kids or I want to show my family, whomever, what I'm capable of. So yeah. I'm so excited that you are here. Um, I know, obviously, since going through Fast Track, you're working with clients. I see you on Instagram running your <laughs> programs and always posting delicious food. What? Is going on in your business currently that you feel is most profitable what's working best well i love uh, mainly i'm doing one-on-ones and um you know coaching one-on-one -on -one because that's as you say it's the best way to start um and uh, no that's working well my my and as you know because we spoke before on the on the community call um, I have some uh, corporate opportunities that are coming my way um, and I, you know, I would love to pursue that, even though initially that was not what I was thinking, um, but I'm getting more and more interested in it. Um, what I, my main thing is that I do have clients, but I don't have, you know, they don't seem to come in a system. <laughs> it's, always, it's always sort of a bit of a problem, not a bit of a problem, but, you know, to to like next week, I'm running a challenge, uh, a free challenge to grow my mailing list, which is fine. And I have quite a few people on the challenge, um, but you know, how to expand my audience because obviously social media is not working that well because Instagram is restricting more and more, you know, the people that see your stuff. Facebook, I really don't like, <laughs> I'm not on it very often. I've tried LinkedIn, I'm on Nextdoor um, and other things, but I would like to have, you know, obviously I'm looking at your business, which is very profitable. It's wonderful. And you do both, you know, coach the coaches and then you coach the clients as well. Um, and I would just have a, would like to have a, you know, a system that gives me a regular income rather than always sort of thinking, oh, uh, you know, yes, I have a here and there, I have a few clients. Um, but it seems to be a bit of yes. a struggle. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So the, the things that are working well for you right now, you said are one-on-one -on -one clients. So you're finding them, you're signing them, you're having a good experience with them. We know one-on-one -on -one coaching is some of the most profitable work we can do as a health coach, because as you alluded to, 
you don't have to do anything ahead of time. It's not like you have to record 27 videos before you can have that first client. You can just do it today. So that's great. Um, This corporate possibility um, that you had, this opportunity that you have might turn into something. So those two things are going well. What are you doing in your business right now that is draining, that is not profitable, that is like, (laughs) ugh, on your system? Well, everything that's not coaching. And that's what that's what I said before that, you know, I how how am I going to get this, you know, business to be successful while still doing all the admin and and the social media? Well, social media is different because I don't mind being on Instagram. That comes quite uh, natural to me. But again, I'm not someone that posts every day. Um, you know, it, it's like if there was someone else that would tell me what, you know, Oh, today you've got like for my free challenge next week. I posted for two days, then I for, not forgot about it, but you know, then, oh, oh I haven't posted for a while. Um, it's all sort of, <laughs> my energy seems to come and go a little bit. And uh, if I could, um, I would delegate everything else apart from coaching to someone else. But obviously being still in the early stages of the business, I don't have, you know, don't want to spend money to hire people sure. to do that Health for coaches me. never want to do but you know the last thing we want to sit down is do is sit down and work on our finances or mm. clean out the inbox or do all those <laughs> admin tasks i know i know how that rolls and maybe one day there's some help for that uh for you are there any efforts that you've done in your coaching practice that just because this happens to all of us um you thought it was a great idea you put it out there and uh, it fell flat um Yeah, well, sometimes when you, um, yeah, you try and communicate something on social media and uh, you think either a post is really, you know, something from the heart that might get people or, and nothing, you know, either Instagram (laughs) doesn't circulate it enough or, you know, or people don't, uh, you know, when you ask for a communication and people don't sort of do that. uh, or, you know, communicating what I do and maybe people not sort of uh, reacting to it, but it's not, you know, I don't take it personally, obviously. It's like I'm trying to see what works um, and what doesn't. Or um, a lot of people are interested or ask me, you know, for um, information. And then as we spoke before, so the once they hear that they've got to pay <laughs> for something, they go, oh, you know, I don't need it now and things like that. But I think, you know, it's not just me, it's just the, the industry. So that, that I, I would say, and that's uh, what we were talking before on the call is how to communicate what I do in a way that makes, you know, that comes across and makes the, the person reach out and say, oh yes, I need that. And yeah, I know what exactly. you're going to say. I know you're going to say, say? I, Tell you're me. Gonna say that I need to have my target market completely, you know, um, set up and the problem needs to be big. <laughs> which is, you know. <laughs> You've been paying attention. Yes, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say two things. And now I feel like I should save that for a second. But no, I was going to say that first. I was going to say, Isabella, for you, the two things that sounds like are going to move the needle for you. One is, this is going to be my question, what big problem are are you currently solving for your clients? And adjacent to that, (laughs) can you solve a bigger problem? When we want to make bigger money, we have to think about solving a bigger problem. You know, if the roof blew off my house right now, you better believe I'd be spending money to get a roof put back on, right? Because I have a big problem so the bigger problem you can solve the better talk to me about the problem you're helping your clients with well last year um when we went through fast track and i was working on my target market and it's always been more or less you know even before i was sort of targeting women a similar age to mine so you know midlife um not necessarily menopausal because that that was not but it's more you know in the second stage of their life caring you know, seeing their bo- body change and their sort of pro- possibly their mind change. And I've done all the interviews and I've had, you know, questionnaires and, and a lot of feedback. And the main problem seems to be extra weight, you know, stubborn weight. 
and hormonal changes. Um, so that was my target market. And with my first challenge last June, it really uh, was very successful. I had 70 people, you know, for, from zero, 70 people signed up yes. and my email list grew quite a lot. Uh, so that obviously was a, a problem big enough to go people on it. Um, I then got sort of sent out, uh, off track by, as you know, this corporate uh, client approaching me. Um, and, you know, it's a, it would be a big job. And they said to me, you know, they went on my, my website and I had, uh, you know, the, the tagline was something about mid, midlife women. And they said to me, oh, but, you know, you can't have that there if you work with us because, you know, to, to work That's in right. a corporate environment, you have to Let target everything. Let me pause every... you there, actually, Isabella, yeah. because uh, they're right, you know, in a way, because to go the corporate route would be very different from what you've yeah. been doing, right? Yeah. So while I want you to keep pursuing that opportunity and seeing yeah. where it leads, that's not the thing that you've been building towards, yeah. working on. You didn't even seek this out. It just kind of came to you. So let's yeah. call that an outlier. And you yeah. never know what can happen with that. I absolutely think that could be a huge opportunity for yeah. you. But within the, the midlife women that you currently work with, sounds like the big problem that you help them solve is the, the stubborn weight that they're experiencing. Mm. Yeah. So, and this goes for everyone, no matter who you're targeting, who you're working with, if you want to make more money, you got to solve a bigger problem. So what might that look like of the women you've worked with, the women, you know, even yourself, yes, there's stubborn weight. And what else is going on in their lives? What are all these women experiencing that may actually be a bigger problem than that? Well, what wise or otherwise? <laughs> yes, that's what, you know, it's like the empty nester syndrome of uh, sort of a bit of depression and, uh, and not feeling like themselves and sort of feeling that they, their life is changing, um, a bit of lack of purpose, you know, it's sort of... Um, lack of energy. Uh, I mean, I know all the, I know all the symptoms. It's just trying it to, to, to package it up in a way that, um, you know, because I'm not, I don't have a particular medical sort of, you know, uh, issue that I'm solving. Let's not worry about that. So right yeah. now, let's not worry about it yeah. so much that you know it or you have it. We just want yeah. to think about the women and yeah. what is the thing that is like the roof blowing off their house. It is that yeah. important to them. It is so necessary yeah. for them to take care of right now. Yeah. So like, for example, you said something about losing purpose and feeling depressed in the second half of life. To me, that feels bigger. It probably includes weight loss to a degree, to some degree, uh, yeah. this change of their life, but it's bigger than that, right? It's just feeling yeah. powerless and lack of motivation and almost like missing out on the second half of their entire life. Yeah. So if you gave women back half of their life, that starts sounding like the value of a roof, you know, or, or probably uh, more than that. That's funny because the way you say it, it does sound like it. <laughs> that's a little, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. it is in that it's in how you say it. So a lot of women yeah. will just say, Oh, I just can't lose these 10 pounds. But what they're really saying is all these bigger things, you know, I feel invisible. I'm not seen. Maybe my husband doesn't see me anymore. Maybe I go to work and everybody ignores me now that I'm over 50. You know, yeah. all they, all they look at are the cute 25 year olds. You know, yeah. I used to work in corporate and I was a cute 25 year old. And I remember what that was like. Um, you know, so they're, they're, they're giving you a glimpse into their life and it's your yeah. job as a marketer to really find the pain point that is so big they can't yeah. help but say oh my god yeah i need this yeah oh no i totally see it i think i was i was on the right track last year and then i i got completely sort of um and also as you say you know that that's to address my marketing isn't it it's not to say that if someone else approaches me i can't work with them because I can always do that. But I think it was this corporate possibility that throw, threw me off because they were so keen and, and said, oh, you know, they actually made me change the front page of my website, which is now under restyling anyway. But 
that that was the thing that threw me a little bit because I thought, oh, maybe you know, if I if I um, not not that I'm too niche because it wasn't really that niche, but you know, maybe the way to go is to open it up a little bit and see what happens. Given that I am still at the beginning, sort of, you know, not not. Um, but again, if I do that, then I am a little bit aimless, and that that's what I feel. Also, also. Um, the target market we were just talking about speaks to me because I'm in it, and um, I know yes, what you're it very feels powerfully like. in it. That's how we started yeah. this whole conversation with you yeah. talking about how important yeah. it is for you to That's do something right. with the second half That's of your right. life, and you yeah. have this motivating story of your yeah. husband having a stroke. I mean, there yeah. is a lot there. It's not yeah. to say that the corporate opportunity isn't a good one, but it is just a wild card at this point. Yeah. And if yeah. you were to go that route, it's not that your target market gets wider. Your target, your target market would yeah. become corporate clients. Yeah. That's, that's, right. the, that, that's what it is. So yeah. it's, it's still quite narrow, but it's completely different. Yeah. So let's, yeah. let's call that like a hobby for now. That yeah. can be like that's true. the thing yeah. you kind of look into in your spare time. Yeah. Um, but if you were able to solve a bigger problem, so we talked about giving a woman literally half of her life back. Um, another, you know, we're just, just brainstorming women around 50 start having a lot of health conditions, right? That's when they start getting prescribed different medications. What are some things that you're seeing with the women that you've worked with? Well, it's mainly due to, you know, pre-menopause or menopause or post-menopause. So it's all to do to the ups and downs of, um, of the hormones. So, you know, uh, it, uh, inability to sleep, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sore joints, pains, uh, bloating, you know, weight, uh, gain, uh, unexplained gain, you know, gain, uh, weight gain. Um, Are they what taking else? medicine for, I know a lot of women end up on medication for depression. Yes. Anxiety. I was about to say mood, mood swings and anxiety. That's a big one as well. Um, so yeah, all of that. And, and generally lack of, you know, women would say, oh, it's just, I'm not just myself anymore. Um, and I know what they, you know, I've experienced it myself. So it's, uh, I know what that means. Uh, so, okay, so yes. let's say that there was one of these particular health issues. It's depression. It's uh, insomnia. I know a lot of women get diagnosed with autoimmune diseases once they hit their fifties. Yeah. Um, there's diabetes and, you know, many populations, like women over 50 are going to be higher in diabetes. There's Oh my goodness, the cancer, there's everything that starts to, like once you hit 50, right? That's where people start yeah. getting the diagnoses. So another option, I don't know if it's right for you, but another option could be, okay, instead of working with women around their weight, I'm going to work with women who have a new autoimmune diagnosis. Yes, they're struggling with their weight, but now they have this diagnosis, which can feel like a much bigger problem. Oh, yeah. I have a disease. My doctor told me I have this thing and he told me I have to take this medicine and that it's incurable. Like that could be another possibility for like, what's a yeah. really big problem to help a woman with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So those are some ideas, right? If you want to make more money, solve a bigger problem. And then I want to get back to something that you uh, said about audience. So if you have 10 people on your mailing list. That's 10 people that you can sell to effectively. You have hundred people, there's a hundred people. So the fastest way for you to expand your reach and get your story in front of more midlife women um, would be to find partners, to find someone else's audience that you can borrow for a little while, whether it's to hold a workshop or to like, maybe it's even a corporate client. You're going to go in quarterly and do yeah. something with them, but you want to be able to position yourself in front of other people's audiences. So if we think about this woman who's terrified of losing the second half of her life, she's feeling depressed, she's carrying around extra weight, where can you go find her? What, where, what audiences would be ideal for you to get in front of? Well, now, funny that you say that. I, um, I recently made a new friend, which is it's good because you know you can make new friends in the second part of your life, Heck and yeah. she, she's Australian and um, she a uh, bit older than me, but she runs a, a hiking, a women's hiking uh, travel agency. Basically, she's the boss, wow. um, and uh, so that's what she does. She organizes women-only uh, hiking trips around the world, and uh, 
we we become very friendly and her her uh, main audience is women between you know 45 and 65 that want to get fitter so in fact she has now sort of advertised my challenge on her facebook page and uh, on her mailing list which is much bigger than mine so you know that that's one way of going that is perfect yeah. oh my god and there's so much yeah. of that there's travel yeah. for yeah. their yoga retreats there's you know this is the kind of right. thing is perfect not only because yeah. it's this right type of woman but yeah. there are women who are already spending money to try and help themselves do something different live differently right exactly exactly i asked her in fact you know just uh i said well, how much do they pay to go you know they go on trekking trip to to the great wall of china um wow. and you know so she said and that that was our discussion actually we've gone on walks and talked about it what makes someone invest though that amount of money to do that but not to spend it on a health coaching program you know or or you know what and so we were sort of chatting about that and I, I suppose it's the experience you know when you travel you just the excitement rather than um yeah sitting at home and talking to someone on a screen I suppose yes yeah, much it's, more exciting I mean mm. what a wonderful collaboration you could do maybe there's a trip that includes yes. this whole wellness piece yeah. or yeah. other collabs that yeah. you can do um yeah. and not even just to sell a program with her and then split the profits or however that would work but anything yeah like you're already starting to do to build your mailing list using yeah. her audience and you can always return the favor and promote something oh she's yeah doing to yours oh yeah yeah this is exactly yeah. right can we find more of these adventures for the midlife women that's right well i i wanted to you know before covid part of what i wanted to do with uh my my company was because i'm italian and everybody seems to love italy <laughs> so um who wouldn't <laughs> um and so i thought you know why not organize some sort of uh, bespoke uh health not healthy but you know bespoke wellness weeks uh in my part of italy because i come from near venice um northeast of venice and it's not you know venice is very popular but not the the hills and the part of italy where i come from so i thought that would be a great uh thing to do uh but then covid <laughs> covid yes. hit and it, yeah and uh, that goes uh halted but that's something that i'm think still thinking about you know to because as soon as you mentioned the word travel everybody's enthusiastic you know i went to a few networking events and when I mentioned it, the attention was unbelievable. So everybody would be coming to Italy. <laughs> but if I asked them, you know, do you want to, uh, you know, have uh, um, pay for a health coaching? I thought that, you know, not many people know what actual health coaching is, but, you know, they're much more attracted to traveling than, than that. Yes. Okay. Let's follow that train of thought for a second. And for anybody who's watching, we'd love your two cents too. What else is exciting for a midlife woman? Travel. Yes, that's exciting. Get me out of this house. I've been stuck here since I had babies 30 years ago. <laughs> you know, <laughs> travel is exciting. I'm thinking fashion. Yeah. Uh, new clothes, new bags, new shoes. These are things she's interested in. These are things she's probably spending money on and gives yeah. her a little Hmm. And although she might not understand coaching or want to do coaching or think she needs coaching, she definitely would love to talk to you if you were doing something that went hand in hand with maybe style, uh, yes. sty uh, af style after 50. There's all sorts yeah. of personal stylists who work with women. Oh, yeah. Style. I have a friend, actually. But you have all the not... friends you need, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I forgot to mention that, you know, my, my sort of company's name is Is a Healthy Kitchen because I love cooking. And that's also something that gets a lot of interest. That's, you know, uh, especially on social media when I, when I cook, when I talk about food. So uh, anytime you, you put food and travel together, you always have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you absolutely have a winner. And so maybe, you, although you're doing a lot of cooking yourself, again, the reason we're talking about this is because you need to find strategic partners That's with right. audiences to borrow. So maybe you're partnering with the high end cooking boutique, you know, that does classes and they have a whole 
mailing list of their own where, you know, people are interested in coming in for cooking classes and maybe you're going to do a class there. And yeah. now you have exposure to their audience. Maybe you're partnering with a, a chef. Uh, maybe you're partnering with a restaurant. That's Anyone amazing. who's going to be willing to send out an yeah. email on your behalf and promote your thing so that you can go from however many people are on your mailing list now to double, triple, 10 times in that, 100 times in that every time you show up in front of a different audience. Yeah. And if you're doing something, if you're solving a big problem, a big, big problem, and you're selling something that yeah. is profitable, like one on one coaching, and we know that's profitable, and you sell it to enough people. <laughs> that's how you know that's how you end up with the six and seven figure business it's sort of a yeah. combination of those things uh, obviously one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to max out at a certain point you can only work with so many people but you'll raise your rates for a real premium and then you can always start small groups and find scalable solutions as your numbers yeah. grow but ne just try to do one thing really really well yeah. instead of like you know, most health coaches, well, then I'm going to run this sugar detox, but then I'm going to do this thing for my kid's school. And then I'm going to do this corporate thing. That's all fine in the beginning. But I think you're at the point now where you got to hone in on where is the most profit yeah. potential and then double yeah. down there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I stuck to one-on-one -on -one coaching because I thought, you know, that's, that's the way to go at the moment anyway, until I have a bigger audience, I suppose. So. Yeah. Well, the good news yeah. for you is Bella is you have amazing friends. <laughs> you're very well positioned even with your uh you know your your italian background and your cooking background i mean does it i feel like it's all gelling in my mind already are you feeling that well i i feel it and I, you know that's why i'm so i've always been so enthusiastic about what i want to do it's just um you know that's that that's why i'm here it's like I've got all the pieces, how do I put them together? You know, I, and, and sometimes being by myself, it just gets a bit frustrating because I'm not, you know, I'm good at some things, I'm not good at others. And like, you know, technology comes in the way, I always figure it out, but it's always a barrier. Of yeah, some, we get know. in the weeds, we forget in the weeds, but if we just think big picture for you, I'm imagining you getting yourself in front of these adventurous women or these women who want to be adventurous or these women interested in fashion and food. And you're in front of them not saying, hey, I can help you lose 10 pounds. You're in front of them saying, let me help you live the next half of your life the way you want to live Good. it. Look at me. I look great. You don't have to say that. They're just going to know. I look great. I feel great. Here I am in front of you doing what I love. I'm full of passion. They're going to be so attracted to that. You're in front of a new audience and you're solving a huge problem. And then you're going to sell them into your premium coaching package. Boom, 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 boom. You got this. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So give me on a scale of one to 10. How confident were you at the beginning of our phone call that you could have a six-figure business? Six. Okay. And now that we have put together this idea, this plan on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you? 10. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you absolutely can. This is, it's, it's a numbers game. Big problem. Yeah. Big dollar amount for whatever they're paying you. A lot of people that you can sell to. And you are good I to see. go. And it's so helpful to talk to you, you know, and just talk in general, because often we get stuck in our heads, isn't it? And it just, yes, yes. <laughs> yes that's why we're trying so hard to offer these opportunities for you guys yeah. to have more opportunities to speak with each other, speak with me, not just be, you know, at home by yourself working. Yeah, in a bubble. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> it's, made, it's made a huge difference. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And again, for those of you listening, if you have interest in joining Fast Track like Isabella did last year, you can put your name on the wait list at healthcoachpower.com slash wait list. That is coming up pretty soon. So if you're ready to get your business moving, that's a great way to do it. Isabella, thanks for having a wonderful chat this afternoon. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Thank you. I'll see you next week for mentorship call. Bye-bye.